Hey guys, what's going on? I'm back with another review. Today it's an Atherin Genesis uh, locomotive. I haven't done one of these in forever. Um, but uh, it is a Atherin Genesis uh, Missouri Kansas Texas GP39 uh, dash 2 phase 3 GP39 dash 2 um, uh, number 361. And uh, so. Uh, DCC and sound equipped, got Tsunami 2 LEDs, so uh, let's go ahead and check this thing out. So, uh, got to shake it a little bit, come on. Almost there. Sometimes it just takes a little bit, little bit more shaking than what you would think. Or you can just pull the lid right off. Smells pretty good. Got your uh, manual here. And uh, this goes over uh, operator's manual and sound guide. So you got handling and maintenance, more handling and maintenance, DC and sound if you want to run on DC and have uh, specific sounds. Here's your uh, function assignments, function key assignments, DCC and sounds, just talking about CVs um, and your basic volume controls and CVs. All your different sounds on here, all your different prime movers, all your different horns, all your different bells, and all your different prime movers. You got the EMD 567 series, the EMD 645 series, the EMD 710 series, and newer uh, GE series, and then air compressors and couplers at the bottom there. Uh, more DCC and sound stuff. Stuff about the Tsunami 2 dy dynamic digital exhaust in there. Not really going to go into that. More advanced CV chart here. For the more advanced among you that want to change that kind of stuff. Basic troubleshooting over here. Warranty information. FCC compliance stuff. That's it. That's the manual. Um, this is all. Uh, News flyer stuff. They always put stuff like that in there. Um, let's see. This is a warranty card. You do, if you want to register a warranty, you will need this. Um, this is uh, information about the warranty, telling you that there are specific things that aren't taken care of, and then this is an Athern news flyer, which you don't need, quite honestly. And this has, uh, this is the uh, parts diagrams. This is showing for the long hood, looks like. And this is showing, this is ATSF phase two, and KT phase three. Oh, okay, Reading phase one is up here. ATSF phase two is here. Uh, the BN Phase 2B is there, uh, and uh, the e, uh, ATSF GP39-2U Phase 1A or IA1 is there, and the MKT is there. So, if that's not confusing, I don't know what is. Um, they have really jacked up the manuals since I've had a locomotive like this. Um, so yeah, that's all that sweet information. Let's go ahead and get to the locomotive itself. Take the foam off. There she is, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, whatever you want to say. That is one heck of a beautiful locomotive. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, turn the camera around and, uh, just kind of, we'll get, uh, we'll get down to, uh, looking at details. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and take this out of the packaging here. Set that aside. Go ahead and sit down in my chair here. Hopefully we don't mount the tripod. And uh, hopefully I can get this on uh, camera too. And it just slides out like you would have on really any other box. Um, pull tab here. They've changed these uh, box designs up a bit. I guess to be a little bit more secure. Sometimes 
You really got to put some pressure on them. All right. And uh, careful, don't grab for the handrails. And uh, try to grab at the fuel tank. And then uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll put that back and uh, set that aside. And uh, I'll lower the tripod here and we'll take a look at uh, some of the finer details. All right, so checking out the fine details here. So first of all, probably a good idea to take these handrail protectors out. So you look at that MKT logo there on both sides. Just slide that on out. Now check out that paint scheme. I have always been a big fan of the uh, MKT yellow and green paint scheme. It has always been my favorite. More so than the maroon color, trust me. Uh, I, I've always said that the uh, the UP MKT Heritage Unit uh, really should have been painted into this scheme. I know the maroon is sort of the original kind of scheme that the MKT used. With this green and yellow stripes, the green with yellow stripes, it's there's something about it, man. It pops. It, it, it draws attention, you know? And um, the reason I specifically bought this specific... Uh, paint scheme in this specific uh, railroad is because uh, I've been doing uh, a lot of research on the MKT. Uh, not only that, but the town I used to live in, St. Joe, Texas, that used to be uh, that that town uh, used to have the uh, MKT Wichita Falls branch running right directly through it, and uh, it is long since gone, abandoned in 1973. But uh, the roadbed and a lot of the culverts and little bridges and, and even some of the rails in Gainesville. Gainesville, there was a, uh, there's some in Gainesville where they crossed over the Santa Fe at Tower uh, 164. And uh, all that kind of cool stuff. So uh, I, I've always had, uh, you know, we're all growing up. Growing up, I've always had an interest in the MKT. Simply because they ran through my hometown. So... Um, yeah, it's always been uh, a big interest to me, but uh, what we're going to do now is uh, I'll bring you around here and we can take a look at some of the finer details here, point my tripod down, it's a new tripod so I apologize, I'm trying to get used to it, but uh, yeah, as you can see this is a beautiful, beautiful paint scheme, I hope this is straight. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful paint scheme. We've got a uh, Leslie RS5T up top there, which is uh, should be correct for these guys. Um, I do believe that they were delivered with uh, RS5Ts. Now the, uh, the the MKT was a big, 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 big user of Leslie horns. Uh, you know, S5Ts, uh, S3Ls, RS3Ls, RS5Ts. You name it, they had it. And even on the back here, if we take a look, they've got a Leslie single chime, which is uh, kind of bent, which uh, already disappoints me. Come on, Atherin. It's loose, too. So um, that's a major disappointment. Um, but they've got a Leslie single chime, which is something I, uh, another unique feature about the MKT that I really, really loved. And that's one of the reasons I picked up the model is because they've got dual horns so you go into reverse and I believe Soundtracks has it set up to where if you go in reverse uh, you have the uh, single chime and if you're going in forwards you have the uh, five chime and uh, look at those class lights too those class lights look mighty fine if we take a look at my older uh, GP39-2 that I've got now, excuse the uh, slightly poor weathering job on this. I didn't do the best of jobs when I was 12. But, I know this is a Santa Fe model comparing to an MKT model. But check out the difference in those class light lo uh, looks. As you can see, this is, not a, this is not a plated over class light look. This is a, um, 
this is a, a, a regular standard class light and if you check that out there's a major difference there a major difference and uh, of course you know this is a newer model for Matherin so you know I did expect that uh, there would be some improvements but uh, wow those look really really nice um, I don't believe they operate maybe they do operate if they operate I will really 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 be surprised because uh, they don't look like they operate but uh, I don't know let me look at the back again the back ones, no, they don't look like they operate. I thought for a second they did, but uh, no, I don't think they do. I don't think they do. That will be cool, though, to see. Um, but I don't think these have lighted number boards either, which is, again, come on, Atherin, get in the game, man. Um, but I do believe it does have that beacon, so the beacon should operate. But, uh, yeah, check that out. That is a heck of a model there absolutely wonderful looking and um, you know just going over the MKT specific details uh, I could go on and on for hours um, but uh, next thing that I want to look at is prototype accuracy which all I have to do is pull it up on my cell phone here and um, yeah we can take a look and there is uh, one picture of it and, uh, it, oh, it's a UP locomotive now. Well, maybe not anymore. I don't even know if it exists. Um, but this was when in the world was this taken? When was it? 1987. So I do believe that this particular unit was delivered in 83 or 84. I'm not, I can't remember. Uh, I'll look here in just a second, but uh, looking at the prototype photo, uh, let me zoom out just a bit, so I'm zoomed in, there she is, let me turn the brightness down so you may actually be able to see it, so uh, that looks uh, pretty dead on, and I would say, I've had experience with Atherns paint, being slightly off but uh, built 1984 okay early 1984 March 1984 is the build date okay uh, sorry um, but being as though Ather sometimes tends to get the paint just a little little bit tiny bit off I'd say this is pretty dead on and uh, it does look like uh, it has its RS5T still as of 1987 uh, so that would mean that um, it kept its S5T, RS5T, whatever it may have been, throughout its uh, at least early lifetime. Now, MKT was absorbed or merged with UP in 1988, so that would mean that uh, pretty much I would bet it kept its S5T all its MKT service life, maybe into its UP service life. Um, but yeah, this is a beautiful locomotive. I mean, just take a look at that. The striping on it. It is unlike anything that I have. And um, this will be a very great candidate for weathering. Um, but I just, you know, I love this paint scheme and I, I love everything about it. So, uh, yeah. It's a wonderful paint scheme. Take a look at the back end again. Yeah, it's pretty wonderful, isn't it? So, um, yeah. I think uh, it's time for a sound demo, don't you think? And uh, running. So, uh, I'll uh, meet you on the other side then. Alrighty, well, here we are on the layout. And I'm uh, going to go ahead and start up the track power here. And uh, we'll get it going. Now that, that sounds good. Much, much better than my old Tsunami version. Um, which is that Santa Fe that I sh showed you earlier, that Santa Fe GP39. 
it has uh, just regular old Tsunami. Uh, I believe that was from a 2014 run, and this is a newer run, obviously, so it's got Tsunami 2. Sounds so, so, so much better. Uh, so, let's go ahead and try F0, which is the headlight. Ooh, yeah, that's a nice, nice bright LED. And when I say bright, I mean that's bright. That's nice, I like that. I love that they changed over from bulbs. That's what I absolutely love. Let me grab the manual from over here, I forgot to move it. Um, that's what I love is that they switched to LEDs. So, it's fantastic. It's nice and bright. Let me go ahead and turn that off now. Uh, F1 is the bell. Which that sounds, that's the usual default, that's the default bell that they have set on there. Uh, not bad, you can easily uh, change that with some settings. Sorry, I'm just uh, setting the tripod a little, a little different here. Um, then uh, you've got F2, which is the horn. Should be an S5T or RS5T, I forget which. Uh, let's try the reverse horn. Uh, apparently didn't have that feature. Nope, we are in reverse and uh, yeah, okay, well I guess it doesn't have the reverse horn like I thought, unless that's something that you have to set up separately. Uh, F3, uh, coupler clink, or no, 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 not coupler clink on these, sorry. Uh, short horn, which can also be reprogrammed to cross it, crossing sequence, but this is the short horn. There you go. So that's good for signaling you want to move forwards or backwards. F4 is the dynamic brakes or straight to idle, um, which Depends on locomotives. Um, which I'll demonstrate here in a little bit when we get moving. F5 is lighting effect 1, which does the beacon. If you can't see the beacon, it's flashing. I think you can see it's right up there. There you go. You see the light there? All right, F6, lighting effect two, which does nothing as expected. Uh, F7 is the dimmer slash cab chatter, so let's turn on the headlight again. I don't know if you can hear that, but see the headlight dimmed. And it did a, a cab chatter. I don't know if you can hear it. It's not very loud, but you can, uh, you can, what you can do is you can go in and you can either reprogram the dimmer to a different function key or silence the cab chatter. I'm not a big fan of the cab chatter. I never have been. Um, uh, cab chatter effects on, on HO scale locomotives to me it just doesn't work, uh, it, it, something about it doesn't scale right, so, um, you know, it just doesn't, doesn't appeal to me. Uh, F8 is mute, which obviously mutes the locomotive. Um, F9 is alternate mixer, which does the half volume. So if you're like me and, uh, you kind of find it a little loud at times, you can half volume it with F9, or if you're just trying to talk over it, F9, that's your friend. F10 is straight to 8 and sander valve, F11 is brake set, brake release, F12 is brake select, I don't know what that means, F13 is couple, uncouple, uh, which means the sounds, it doesn't actually do anything with the couplers, the couplers you have to manually uncouple. 
just like any other locomotive. F14 is half speed and momentum override. F15 is handbrake. F16 is HEP mode on off, which this locomotive is an equipped with HEP that it's not known. There's no such thing on this locomotive. Uh, F17 is fuel loading sequence. F18 general service sequence. F18 is not used. F20 is steam generator, uh, which doesn't, this locomotive doesn't have that. F21 and F22 are not used. F23 is all aboard slash coach doors. Um, F24 not used, F25 not used. F26, uh, RPM notch up. Uh, F27, RPM notch down, so you can manually, manually notch up and down. Uh, F27 is, or, uh, sorry, F28 is not used, and emergency stop is a red emergency Mars light if equipped, which this locomotive does, does not have that. So, that is uh, pretty much all the sound features there for you. And uh, we'll check out the uh, dynamic brakes stuff, I'm pretty sure. Uh, here, just a second. Oh, is weird. Okay, so the dynamic brakes works if your locomotive have that has dynamic brakes, which this locomotive does. So when you move, it should enable the dynamic brakes. Uh, if your locomotive has dynamic brakes, if not, it will be a straight to idle function. Um, so I am going to uh, go ahead and zoom out here, and uh, we'll get this thing moving. F4. So there you go. There's your dynamic brakes. I need to set up the momentum on this. seems to operate pretty smoothly too. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do the final thing here, which I kind of already did, showing you the dynamic brakes. Uh, we'll see how uh, smooth of an operation we can get out of this. Um, the track is a little dirty, I shall tell you. Uh, so I'm going to move my tripod here. Let's see what we can do. All right, one speed step. Looks like it is moving pretty well, and it hasn't had a break-in period yet, I should note. No break-in period, looks like it's doing just fine. Let's go to two speed steps here. Pretty good. Three. Good. Four. Five. Six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, and back down to zero. And reverse. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And there you have it. It runs real smooth. So, uh, 
That is a uh, that is a plus for you. You uh, you have a nice smooth running locomotive. Sounds great, looks great, and runs perfectly smoothly. So um, all in all, I'd say this is a pretty solid locomotive, and um, I would give it probably about a nine out of ten. Why would I give it a nine out of ten? Well, I knocked off one point for the. Uh, uh, for the uh, back horn being uh, loose here so that uh, automatically knocks you off a point otherwise um, I'd say it's a pretty dang good model so uh, I'll leave you guys with a run by here and uh, until next time thanks for watching and bye bye guys back with you uh, just for a little uh, secondary so uh, segment to that last video there uh, I did figure out that there uh, is a uh, feature that you can do uh, to set up the reverse horn like I was talking about so uh, let me go ahead and unmute this and I'll tell you how to do it no well I'll demonstrate and then I'll show you how to do it so here's your normal horn which is a Leslie S5T and then if we hit 3 which would usually be uh, your uh, which would usually be your uh, uh, short horn we hit 3 and now we've got our uh, alternate horn here which is a Leslie A200 Hit three again, back to the S5T. So, uh, the way you do this is you can reprogram CV121. That's 121. Here, I'll mute this again. Reprogram CV121 to whatever value of horn you want. So, for this, this is a single chime. So we would have anything like the uh, Leslie A125 or the S Leslie uh, A200 or the Les uh, the Wabco A2 or AA2 or E2, um, any of that sort of stuff, um, or the Leslie A125. That's a 1253E. Uh, any single chimes on here uh, would do. So you would reset it to whatever value. In this case, it's one uh, uh, 21 so you reset CV 121 to 21 and that gets your uh, alternate horn excuse me which I think is pretty cool so uh, here it is one more time for you 